Now, I know that you've chosen this video because you're a Rolling Stones freak and you want to see footage of them in the Seattle Kingdom. And I am going to show that to you, but if you'll bear with me, I'm going to tell you a really fun story that leads up to that footage. I'm basically a 70s kid, grew up in the 70s, and from the time I was about eight years old, I was a movie freak. And actually, my dad owned this really cool 8mm movie camera, and uh, I found it one day, and I started making my own movies. The first movie I made was called The Monster from Dr. Cyclops Laboratory. Me and my best friend, Bruce Peterson, we started making movies together. And as time went on, we started getting a little more sophisticated. Eventually, I bought a really nice Yashica Super 8 movie camera that was actually like a pro professional camera. And we continued to make movies. We made um, all kinds of movies, disaster movies. We tried to do a Jaws takeoff. I even did a, made a movie called Predator that was um, supposed to be about a, a killer dog, if you can believe it or not. No one else had done that, so I decided to do it. Bruce and I made movies all through the 70s, and um, we actually won a film festival one time for a film that we made called Is It All Worth It? It was kind of like a, um, a reefer madness kind of movie from the 70s that told the, the horrors of uh, smoking pot. Fast forward a couple of years later, and my love of the Beatles sparked an interest in playing guitar. The great thing about it was that I'd actually been playing guitar since I was five years old. My parents kind of made me play guitar, and fortunately, my whole family had a long history in music. My grandfather owned a really cool music store in Seattle called Blackstone Music. So when I was five years old, my dad took me down to grandpa's music shop and said, what do you want to play? And I picked a Fender guitar, and my grandpa pulled it off the rack, handed it to me, and he said, this is yours. And I took guitar lessons from the time I was about five until I was about 10, and then I said, I don't want to do this anymore, and my parents finally let me stop playing guitar. Well, little did I know that uh, around 1978, I would suddenly discover, wow, guitar is really cool. The Beatles play guitar. Wow, I actually know how to play guitar. <laughs> so suddenly all those lessons I had taken paid off and I formed my first band with my good old friend Bruce Peterson. He was on drums, I was on guitar, and my friend Scott Summers was on bass. And uh, we started playing and uh, we formed our first band. It was called the Iosis Band. We really were serious, man. We played all the time and we, we learned to be, become musicians. Eventually, we started playing professionally. We were playing in clubs and taverns before we were old enough to be in there. We had to have special license from Washington State to uh, play in the clubs. In 1981, in August, I believe it was August 24th, 1981, the Rolling Stones released Tattoo You. And this was the first album that ha they had released since we all became such huge fans of, of the Rolling Stones. And so this was a huge deal for us. We just, we were so into the Rolling Stones and we loved that album. We listened to it constantly. And, you know, the Beatles were already broke up, but the Rolling Stones were still an active band. I was so into Keith Richards that I actually ordered his Fender Telecaster that he was playing on tour, the uh, Sunburst Tele with the white pick guard. And then we find out the Rolling Stones are on tour and they're coming to Seattle. We just totally, we couldn't wait, just freaked out. They played on October 14th and 15th of 1981 in the Seattle Kingdom. We bought tickets for both shows. Now this is where it gets really funny. My friend, Bruce, the drummer in my band and my friend from childhood, his dad was a podiatrist, a foot doctor. I came up with this scheme of sneaking in a, a Super 8 movie camera into the kingdom to film the Rolling Stones in concert. So my friend's dad, Dr. Ted Peterson, he made a body cast for me that basically wrapped around my chest and then down my left arm. And uh, inside of this cast was a, a Super 8 movie camera with three cartridges of movie film. 
And so the night of the first show, we slept out in our sleeping bags so that we could be as close to the stage as front. That was in the great days when there was festival seating and the kingdom was a massive building. So we wanted to get in there as quick as, as soon as we could and find our place. So I slept on the ground outside of the kingdom with a body cast on <laughs> and a Super 8 movie camera. Um, inside. So what you're going to be seeing is the footage I took on October 14th in the Seattle Kingdom. The audio that you're going to be hearing is from the next night, October 15th, when I snuck in a cassette tape recorder. I didn't build a body cast for that. I basically just stuffed it down in my underwear <laughs> and snuck in with that. So you're going to be seeing footage from the 14th and you're going to be hearing my bootleg from the 15th of October 1981. Since it was so dark, it was really hard to focus. Um, so a lot of this is out of focus, but there's some really great shots. And just the fact that I snuck a movie camera into the kingdom is so awesome. I love it. So I hope you enjoy this as much as I do looking back on it. This very first shot is my friends Bruce and Brian McDonald, who were both in, in the IOSIS band at the time. This is, captures a little of the excitement that we were feeling. This was the day of the show.
much for coming in. And a lot of you have come a long way and waited a long time around Seattle to get in.
Keith Richards. Yeah.